Yeah, it was crazy. But we're talking about law, and we should be talking about science. Exactly. Well, but we well, can, we're talking we about that now? Yeah, anyway, my, yeah. my bottom line. Yeah, what, yeah sorry, Nate. <laughs> oh my, 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 bottom, my bottom line is that there's too much discretion in the. Yeah, just, we got just, a real sidetracked there. And yeah. um, that's what. That's, that's so what let's uh, everything up. Let's kind of segue into the patent office, okay? Because I think yeah. this is pretty relevant. You know, my, know. my wife says I'm too fat as it is. I don't need to declare myself my own country. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's great. Yeah, get back to work. That's what she yeah. said. You got the bull whip and says, your government and you'll keep working. Because you're going to your, get your green cheese when you're done, buddy. <laughs> I'm right there with you. My ass can classify as its own country. <laughs> Mine's got a fault right, a fault line right down the center of it. <laughs> yeah. oh. All right, back to science, so, guys. All yeah, right, so fine. we can still talk about the politics, but I think it uh, would be kind of good to discuss um, how the uh, patent office is rigged. And we all know that Tom Valone was one of the people that worked in the, the patent office and he was seeing free energy device after free energy device getting suppressed uh through mm -hmm. yeah he, tom he was a whistleblower yeah he worked at the patent office he was a patent who tom clerk. delong tom flown yeah oh flown yeah flown he, he, yeah he, he's, he's doing doing a lot of so, on this uh, alternative energy stuff yeah and he's seen a lot of these devices get basically kiboshed and mm. he knew there was a criminal element involved in this, and he blew the whistle. So um, you can look him up and do some research on Tom Ballone. So he worked for the U.S. Patent Office and seen several devices get, you know, basically shoved in the drawer, so to speak, uh, never to be opened up again. And he he had to come out. His you know conscience got the better of him and said, you know, this is wrong. You know, these people should have the right to have a patent on their intellectual property. So, is Tom Ballone still alive? I, Tom Ballone, I believe he is. Yeah, he is. He, he got yeah, the. He, he's he's doing conferences every year with the some he's one of the first guys and energy, alternative energy. I, I posted on. Uh, he helped me post in my my first uh, manuscript and. In, um, in 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 uh, you know, uh, it was after, also on Tesla time. Yeah, after a conference. Uh, yeah, after a conference. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the first one. I what what uh, what years did he? Do you remember? Did the he Tesla work at the Tech? I, specifically. Oh, geez, uh, that would probably be nineties, nineteen nineties. Nineties. Okay. Yeah, he, yeah. I'm, he might have been the the fellow that I seen in a couple of clips. Um, there was a gentleman, I don't know his name, but he was in the documentary um, I was watching. And he's like, yeah, it, it, I saw the device. It put out more energy than it took in. And um, it was real. And he worked at the patent office. And I don't remember his name, but it might have been him. Yeah. Hmm. Pretty hey, sure Mike, you know how to use my account with your account to make more guests? No, it won't allow me to do it because I'm uh, on a free account. Mm -hmm. I have a 20, I can do 20 guests. Yeah, but I want it like under my station that will go through my There's channel. There's no way I can use use it on your screen? No, not with mm -hmm. my, the free account. I, I did it with Bernie for a bit. I think he had like um, a voucher or whatever. I was able to do it oh. for a while. But now mm -hmm. when I try to connect to Bernie's channel, it won't allow me to do it because I have the free account. Mm -hmm. So. Oh. And but you need a I, voucher to do it. Yeah, he has so a way voucher. I think he had a free voucher that he could pull in another, say, hmm. somebody who's you know using the free. Couple get through. Right. Yeah, he did it for a short time, but I, I haven't been able to connect to his station for the last while. He can do it with mine, but I can't do it with him. Hmm. Uh -huh. So crazy. Yeah, because I want to kind of keep my name, you know, the League of Extraordinary Inventors as my own little brand. You know, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it, I'm not a big channel, not like, you know, uh, Bernie's channel. Yeah. He's got a lot. You more need more exposure for sure. 
but you know, I I don't mind keeping my my things small because I think it's more intimate. We got a regular guys that come on and you know uh, light up my comments board, and it's been really active tonight. I've got a lot of a lot of great comments tonight. Uh, we you do know, Nate, live- Nathan and I shared a similar philosophy with um, the Monday podcast that we've been doing, and I think that's been working really well. Sure. Yeah. You know, Nathan's been getting a lot of hits. How many subscribers you got now, Nathan? Uh, like close to 4,400, something like that. Oh, uh, you're 4, way past 400. me. Oh, God, you're way past me. <laughs> yeah, it goes up, you know, every but, month, like 400. You know what? The anti gravity thing, the anti gravity thing gets better exposure than the free energy stuff. The free energy yeah. stuff is like freaking pulling, like pulling. Yeah, you teeth. know why? I think because it's just like a flooded market on YouTube. There's a lot of like just crap free energy videos, well, you know. That they do that specifically to flood anything that is valid. So they right. will give all the they'll give all Makes the best sense. algorithm to all the fake shit. Yeah. Uh, and, and and anybody who's doing real stuff, they'll suppress and push you down and um you is know, that lose one subscriber. That- Oh, you're way down there, Gerald. Is that one of my 692 subscribers? <laughs> Gerald, hey, I'm Gerald, my subscribers, okay? But hey, it'd be Gerald, nice you're, to have a more. Gerald, you're in the yeah. cores of the earth. I th- I <laughs> think though, there's a couple tricks that we can employ. You know, increasing production value to just naturally grow. You know, like if I share it with people in real life, hey, come check out my channel. They can't suppress that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, mine, mine goes up and down like a toilet seat. You know, one week I'm getting a lot of hits, and then the next month a, a I good idea, hardly anything. Right. A good idea, though, I think uh, a lot of us uh, should do is get business cards and then put your QR code right on the business card. So if yeah. you meet somebody who you think is interested in your channel, just give them the business card. They can scan it right there. Yeah, I still get a lot of, uh, I guess, a lot of skepticism with the stuff that I do. Yeah, but for sure. um, you know the power cell stuff. I think would uh, create a lot more talk, but I, I'm kind of limited on how much I can really talk about that right now because um, we're working on some pretty innovative stuff that's going to really shake up the uh, uh, battery industry. Like my <laughs> my system's actually not a battery; it's a power cell. It produces yeah. power. It doesn't store power like a battery. A battery right. you can recharge. If you try to recharge my cell, you destroy it. Huh. So mine just puts out power. It, it, it's actually a solid state power plant. That's it just doesn't store anything plant. because it doesn't need to. It just puts out so much. It creates power from basically the elements that I put in it. Hmm. It's That's like awesome. a battery, like a battery is a galvanic action and it has storage capacitance in the battery. My cell doesn't work like that. It doesn't have capacitive value, very little. Of well, it. I'm, but I'm definitely it, it going to. Power. Yeah, I'm definitely going to try to feature all of your guys' devices to the extent that you want me to on Divine Science at some point. So oh, um, yeah. that hopefully will get you guys some more exposure as well because I, Divine Science has, has been a, a good um, hot topic on my channel. Yeah, like right now, like the battery market, I've seen a lot of uh, uh, guys promoting these new companies coming up with uh, new lithium batteries and new uh, 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 sodium batteries and new aluminum batteries and all that. But they're all of them are missing the big picture of what they're building. They're hmm. building tiny cells this big. Hmm. If you make a cell this big, like say like the size of a photo record. You know the old records you used to put on a mm-hmm. on a turntable. If you make uh-huh. them twelve inch, twelve inch by twelve inch, but they're only a quarter inch thick, and they're putting out a hundred times more power than a little lithium battery, hmm. and they will last ten, maybe twenty years. Is it right is it good? Does it go back to the geometry and how you separate the charges? It, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's quantum tunneling is what it is. Huh. You're, you're, hey, you're creating that one, but they couldn't do that. They they'd lose too much money. Well, they got to develop <laughs> something that's halfway that's good. That's exactly it. No, you're you're exactly right. You know, it would kill Duracell. It would kill Energizer. It would destroy the solar industry completely, and you know, wind power. 
because you can't yeah. compete with these cells. These cells put out power. There is no energy going in these. They yeah, you can't compete power. with the power of nature. You know, when you're harnessing That's nature right. correctly. Right. We're, so I, we're harnessing we're harnessing power at the nano level. Yeah. I so recently we're got pulling, my, sorry, go ahead. Well, no, I was no, just going to say, I recently got my system running on like a AAA battery. So I should come see you and and give you a coil to run on your system. And then maybe once you get all your business orientations going, I can buy a cell off you and see if we yeah. can run my system without any other battery other than your cell. Right? Because yeah. I don't want to mess with yeah, your Yeah, team up right? video. <laughs> See, like a, like a traditional battery, you put a load on it and you draw direct power coming off that battery, right? Well, this cell technology I'm working on, you don't do that. If you pull a continuous load off the battery, or out, sorry, off the power cell, you actually kill it. You What we do is called mm. pulse charging. Mm. So it'd be two seconds on, seven seconds off. Two seconds on, seven seconds off. If you If you run the power cell, Exactly like I've told you, it will last 5, 10, 15, maybe 20 years. Now, does so that, it, that uh, pattern depend on what uh, system you're running? Does it well, change say, or is that kind of like a so say a so, pattern? Yeah, for an example of a system, say you got an inverter and a stack of car batteries, and then you got a charge controller that charged the batteries. So the power cell will be at the very beginning of the system pulsing that power through the charge controller into your storage banks. Those storage bank batteries run your inverter that runs all your utilities. So uh, my power cell bank, uh, some of my early tests uh, with my partner, uh, we made a very simple cell. It was putting out about 1.7 volts at about 17 amps. Oh, wow. So it doesn't really pulses. So, uh, so it doesn't uh, necessarily um, rely on the the type of battery you're using or the size of battery. Well, a square, yeah, actually, the square area of the battery makes a huge difference in the performance. Well, I'm, what I'm saying like is also, the, the 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 pulsing, the pulsing method. You said two seconds on, seven right. seconds off. Does that change right. based on like your battery that you're using? No, no, it's a, it's a kind of a rule of thumb of how you use those batteries mm. without, without destroying them. So oh, okay, what so that's happens good. No, is, I don't know that. So it, it, think of it almost like a, a self-recharging capacitor. So as soon as that capacitor is full, it wants to dump power. So you dump the power for two seconds, shut it off, take the load off, let it accumulate the power again inside the cell, and then you dump it again. So it's mm. cycle dumping. So if you right. keep this reg so if you keep this regular algorithm of how you allow it to accumulate and discharge, accumulate, discharge, there's no reason I why those where so, so. I've heard cycling before in that same context in the free right. practical it's, guide it's to a, free energy devices. Yeah, it's a totally different method of how to use a battery. But I you know, hmm. what I'm making is not a battery. It does not have capacitive value in it. It has a little bit, but very, very little. Actually, mm. less than most capacitors. But you don't so need it, it to be. You don't need you it to don't store energy. It. It's just putting out all, so much. You know. That's right. It's it's pulling the energy from the quantum vacuum or quantum tunneling. Like you just these. put a tap, and you got a water flowing. <laughs> we created a waterfall. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we've done. It's like Ooh. a well pump. It just yeah. it pumps it out when you need it. That's right. It's yeah. Out. You know, the well is always full of the water and just pump it out. Yep. Mm -hmm. Two second pulses. Yeah. Now, we're, you know, with a small cell, it was about six inches by six inches. We were given 17 amp pulses coming off it. Like I've actually fried meters. Yeah, but that but that's good, though, because you can save that energy. And yes. you can twist it once you save it. And that's then you right. want to do something with it. Sounds like these cells are building up like a capacitor. Yeah, they That's build up. A, they, it, it's you would think they're building up a capacitive charge, but not. Um, the graphite that's used in it that holds a bit of capacitance, but the actual pulse itself is it, it, it's the the matrix on where 
Why would it um, pulse? Are you? Is it? Uh, it just can't hold no more, and it drops the load, drops its charge. No, if you do not pull anything off that battery for or cell, sorry, it keeps saying battery, but it's not. If you don't pull power off the cell, the battery or the cell actually goes into a dormant state. It actually shuts down. So the second you put a load huh. on it. It's, it comes back to life and the amperage will start climbing at a very steady rate. So that's weird. With, yeah. Within about one minute, you're. I built crystal cells. Pulse. I've never seen that, but that's <laughs> definitely. It, 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 it's like digging a hole at your water table. So as soon as you dig the hole, it'll fill up. You empty the hole, the water table fills it again. That's, that's right. exactly yep. what you're doing. That's, yep. that's it. And then you That's can it. only use what's inside so the hole. So are you triggering it to unload right. it, or what are you, you switching? Yeah, it you, you use, a, use a timer circuit and just trigger it. Yeah, I like that analogy. Yep. Okay, then you're dumping so, the the capacitance in there and letting it fill up again. Huh? That's the yep. best way to uh, to. Uh, so the more, that's the a lot more. of free energy devices work that way if you know what you're doing. Well, it's better yeah. to unload that device, amplify to the and dump. That's the way it works. And and the best part about it is it's solid <laughs> state. There's no uh, toxic materials in it whatsoever. Uh, it's non-flammable. Um, all the minerals that we use come from the earth. They're not, you know, you know, uh, they'll catch on fire or, you know, like uh, explode like lithium and uh, get thermal runaways. It's, it's 100% safe. It's actually way safer than a lithium battery. Because if you use the wrong materials, that? you end up with thermite. And then you're just you're blowing holes yeah. in everything. That's yeah. exactly what you're doing. You have to get yeah. it chemically correct together. So what, what actually is the device called? It's 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 basically called well it's it, it is a crystal cell, but we've crystal gone cell. way it's a crystal cell, but we've gone way further with it. Mm. Magnesium is that, pretty explosive. Yeah, you can use that yeah. in the cell, but the problem is you'll get a lot of power probably for the first year or two, but it'll fall off. So we have found other. I think the corrosion cells. gets to the magnesium. If it's well, it's called something. it's called dendrites. The dendrites start forming on the metal and create those pitted mm -hmm. holes. As soon as you get the dendrites in there, that's when the the bat, like a lithium battery or a zinc battery, starts breaking down. You don't suppose you could well, if you're using and shake those dendrites off? Well, we've found uh, two elements that actually will protect the reactive metal from dendrites. With silicon, whatever, what's that called again? Silicon. No, no, it's totally different. I cannot talk about that. Well, well, with crystalline, uh, supposedly in theory, if you can create a, a resonance cascade and start that effect, it can self-resonate. You know. Yeah. So. Well, self -os it's, it's self oscillate. Kind of, yeah. Well, I can mention we'll, something about that. Um, I've actually. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sodium silicate. So one of the um, tests that I did do, I actually had it hooked up to the scope and I was doing the two two second cycle charges. Uh, my power cell was actually um, showing there was a back EMF. In, On in the, the cell? Power, in, in the cell from itself. And there's no That's point awesome. anywhere. Was it yeah. during the switching or event or not? During the dump event, it was showing a back EMF. Oh, that's normal. Yeah. Yeah, no, we were just no discussing. Coil. That's a good. There's no yeah. coil. Yeah, but all materials. Oh, no coil. Wow. It doesn't have to be a coil. Hmm. But yeah, we were just discussing that the back EMF is just uh, unutilized free energy, you know? It's a rebound. It's a rebound. Yeah. yeah. It's all the materials rebound. Will rebound. Yeah, yeah, rebound. Yeah. But, most, but most people don't, most people ignore it or drive it out the system, right? Yeah. Yeah, because right, the rebound out. blows they up your stuff. Out. Mm. They just ground it out, uh, like on motors, like regular uh, DC or AC motors. They'll put a, um, a diode or a filter capacitor there to drown out the back EMF coming off the windings. Mm -hmm. And they still do it today. It's what destroys the switches too, the transistors. And they That's right. at, at first the brand new transistors makes a nice good signal, you know, but give it a. Give us some time with that back EMF, and that signal will go to crap. And that, and that's why they put that circuit. The on. transistor will still work, know. though. I don't know, cause uh, I, I can't remember. I was saying I came across a bit of a breakthrough. You have well, to dump that back EMF away from the transistor and never, ever let it hit the transistor. Okay, ever. so listen to this then, Mike. If that's the case, because now the way that I've got my system running, I was floating it above a magnet. 
a ferrite magnet. So what I'll do now is That's I'll run it from a listing. I run it from a six volt battery from my function generator. It starts it off. So it pops it up about an inch, inch and a half. Then I take the back EMF from the circuit, right. run it back into the coil. It pops up better. to three inches. You're listening? Then I shut my function generator off. Can you figure yeah, it out? And it, and it will bounce off each other. Right. It'll bounce for a little while. But there's no, a little while, dude, I left it while I was sitting talking to Nathan in the comments section for 45 <laughs> minutes. It was sitting on my desk floating from a six volt battery and it was oh. charging the battery as it was floating. <laughs> <laughs> well, if there's diodes on the coil and it's not dumping, the, the coil's not dumping anywhere, it'll stay charged. I'm telling you that this is crazy stuff. Once yeah, that's there, so cool. It gets crazy. I'm going to give this all to everybody, I'm telling you. I'm not keeping this for myself. I'm not. Nathan's going to get a package. Mike does going to get a package. Mike's going to get a package. Phil will. So will you, Ben. You guys are all going to test this. Well, if it's I build it, it'll work. You know that for sure. But if I well, here's the thing. It. I'm giving a package like this with a, a working device. You're getting all the experiments that I've done on, on what I've done. And then you can replicate them or not. Your choice. But I'm also giving a manual that goes with it on how I got to where I got, how to build it, what it's based on, the phi, the platonic solids, the geometrical forms, all of it. Even the wow. 175 separate wow. built coils are That's all a big in spot that for me. Book. I think, gentlemen, I think this is Christmas in July. Well, <laughs> it, it won't be in July. It might be in August. It's after the, the APEC. I'm not yeah. doing anything until after Christmas. <laughs> Don't make it as wait. Wow. Yeah. You know, that, that's started. really cool, Jared. And then, really and then cool. I'm excited. And then after that's, APEC, that's awesome. I'll have to get personal information. I already got Jeremiah Pops. I'm going to send him his stuff. And then everybody else's as well. I'll have to get information from the send it to you. So, yeah. Yeah. Just it's got to be confirmed or denied. But here's what I want. I want you guys to debunk it. Break it. Make it not break work. it. Make me a liar, please. You want you know, Hey, hey, more? that's. I'll, I'll hook it up a thousand and different I, ways and try a thousand different methods. Exactly. And I'm not saying that to be cocky. No, I seriously want you guys to debunk it because then that Test way it, yeah. I'll know whether or not I'm sitting in a debunk back. Debunk what? If it's a working circuit, what's there to debunk? Well, that's just Well, he my wants point. us to make sure we 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 uh, root out all of the uh, – in, in, if there are any incons inconsistencies in what his tests are, are proving. Exactly. Are saying, exactly. You know? So you know, if, I, if, I think the breaking part – you're talking to me. I tend to break stuff. A lot. <laughs> uh, I use a lot more voltage than I'm supposed to. I, I, yeah. I freely admit that. <laughs> what was it that you well, said? That's the good thing about coils, Nate. They I have use a, a lot resistance. more energy. Doesn't than matter I'm how much to. you give it. I mean, how they go? Fry it and find out. Is that how it went? Yeah. <laughs> I amplify everything. It's, it's I love a common it. rule. If it doesn't explode, I don't buy it. It's not uh -huh. As long as your load is not over the the threshold of the uh, what your uh, coil can handle, the then it, you wait until high fine. voltage hits anything in my garage. Trust me, we're gonna have some fireworks. <laughs> Good. I like I said, I, I like debunking, and I really want Mike. And this is why I want to send Mike one to to hook his cell up to the coil and see how yeah. long that's gonna go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that'll be very interesting for both of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's. It, I think that's the next step here is to see how different free energy systems interact with each other. You know, you have one method here and one method here. How is it going to interact with each other? Well, well you're going to have pulse charge, and then the other one's taking in the energy and amplifying it. It's a system. It works. Right, exactly. but, I mean, we're working with, you know, unconventional science. Who knows? There could be something that we discover, you know? Well, yeah, what my yeah. work on is it, you know, like the power cell that I'm working on is an open system. It's not a closed system because the energy obviously is not coming just from the cell itself. It, it has to be coming hmm. from the outside. So yeah, I consider it an open system and that's where the free energy, that's where the second law of thermodynamics does not come into play in my cell because 
I am physically not putting any energy into the device. It's producing it. With yeah, no the rodent energy. coil is a similar system. It's an open, open system. I don't know if you realize this, Mike, but there was a guy back in the 50s that came up with, there were like two rods, and they were made out of material that he wouldn't tell anyone, and he could light a 110-watt light bulb from it just by hitting yeah. the two rods together with the bulb. So don't kid yourself. <laughs> what you're working on is important. In fact, you yeah. need to get to that point. You never know. Huh. Yeah. Uh, you know, a solid state, and you got to think of the, the whole picture with this power cell. It has no moving parts. It's solid state. It, there's nothing in that in the cell that could actually wear out physically other than mm. what's going on at the nano scale. The only thing that can destroy my cell is dendrites. So yeah, the, we have we, we've found a blocker for dendrites. So if that's the case, if we expected say ten years out of the cell, we might have doubled the uh, doubled the length of life on that cell now because of that. I, I wonder if you fix the problem with the lithium cells as well and inadvertently. That's worth a lot Maybe. of money. <laughs> well, well, we've you know, found it's hard to calculate. If you're getting excess in any device you build, it's so hard to calculate that. It's not so hard to kind of see it. It's harder mm. to, 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 it's not so hard to calculate it, but you have to understand that for every hour, there's so many seconds and how many seconds is one cycle of your device and how many watts in that one second did right. your device so, consume and all that okay. crap. Who I'm, does I'm that? I'm glad you, I'm, I'm, cl I'm glad you asked that or made that That's statement. That's where I'm headed next. I can um, tell you right now I have a device that took four hours on two 7-amp 12-volt batteries to stop running at 26 volts was its average run voltage and it consumed two and a half watts for the coil's resistance uh, 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 measurement of 370 ohms and 26 volts. It means right. the coil can... <clears throat> You know, at, at that voltage, it was, uh, you know, two and a half watts. Right. Yeah. Um, if you if you go to my uh, Faraday But research, those two batteries you, you only have 168 watts to offer in in seven amp hours each, which is right. seven amps for one hour. <clears throat> seven amps at 12 volts is, uh, you know, it's it's not a lot of wattage. Right. And our, our and like Nathan likes to say, well, not all watts, watts are the same. You know? Times two. And that's for four hours one time at two and a half watts. I, there you have right. it. I didn't so, do like, math kind of an example uh, with the small test power cells that I made, they're actually on the Faraday Research YouTube channel. The four cells that I did make, I ran them for three months. I, I worked out the numbers of how like much power. Amount, you know? uh, I worked out how much power that these cells were actually producing. It was producing just over one kilowatt a week. So for every month my cell was running, it was producing four kilowatts of power, and it was this big. Hmm. That's killer. Yeah, right? like the vacuum triode amplifier. That was a little tiny vice like that. Yeah, yeah and, and, and uh, I'm not putting any power in it. It's just creating this power out of wow. nowhere. Yeah, the um, no I think, energy uh, going in. Um, I think Floyd Sweet described in the um. I think it was in the Practical Guide to Free Energy Devices, or somebody was describing Floyd Sweet's uh, vacuum triode amplifier as he had like three vacuum tubes, and one of them was actually resonating with what he said was the resonant frequency of the ether, of the basically the universe. Yeah, his input of uh, his input wattage was about thirty milliwatts, and it was getting... yeah. He had to have a little tiny bit of power input, but you're saying yours doesn't have any input at all. That's crazy. Yep, zero, zero That's power. That's nuts, input. Mike. You're crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Speaking of crazy. Somebody's, somebody's, somebody's got to do it. Mm -hmm. I, I want Nathan to build another U-Tron. That's what I want. To build what now? Oh, the U-Tron. Another U-Tron. Oh. <laughs> I've been really wanting to build one my whole life ever since I heard the story, but I don't know. I don't. I don't know where I'd start. Other than the stubble. Oh, field. a U-tron? Did you say U-tron, Gerald? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't know yeah. what, what that is. What is that? That's it's a, a U-core. It's a little chamber that's a square one way and a diamond core. the other. 
It's like a U-shaped core, you know? It's not with, a U-shaped core. A U-tron is a U-shaped core. With no, a, it's not. That's not what he's talking about. Otis D. Carr, U-tron, right? Yes, and there's a tetra yeah, U-tron. Otis D. Carr is in the two tips of the U-shaped core. Yeah, it's a... Or it's a it's, it's a, a, U, it's a, a core shaped like a half square. Oh, okay. A core with uh, a coil wrapped around the core, and the tips of the, the core no. has the the spinning object, uh, the tetrahedron. No. They're they're just pure aluminum, and they have a aluminum, chamber right. in the center. And they're tetrahedron shapes. They, Two ice cream cones. And they spin really fast. Yeah, that's yeah, the like U-tron. Yeah. But they use they use aluminum because they're going to spin the aluminum and take the frequency inside, based on the uh, outside C shaped capacitor, and they're, they're going to use the frame of the whole craft to put the energy into that C shaped capacitor that spins See. the neutron. The neutron goes into the capacitor every time it passes over that. It'll pass yeah. over the neutron, then capacitor, neutron, capacitor. And if oh, you do awesome. not understand potential, you will not make that run. Yeah, that's. Awesome! I never heard that explained like that before. Yeah, that yeah. Is, so so when you get to the capacitance, understand this. So when you're I tell you with a tank switch. Hold on, stop. When I tell you a Tesla coil runs on a pulse magnetic frequency, it's the reason why I tell it to you because every time the C-shaped capacitor goes over the capacitor, it creates a pulse and it builds up the amount of energy and it pulses that out to the Tesla coil. So that's where you're getting your frequency for your Tesla coil in the center of that device. That's why it has no wires running everywhere. It's all based on the frame. Right. That's uh, why Tesla was see, see, Yeah, Tesla was the guy who came up with it, and Otis Carr was the one who inherited that information. That's when Yeah, he was, he was his student. Yeah, he was making the You have the to Ox really cart. start to understand the pulses and stuff, guys. That's why Gerald, your stuff I get because I understand you know, yeah, that capacitor yeah. pulse and potential and convert. I know you do, Nathan. Can I know you do. <laughs> can I get to your really cool a little bit before the end of the show? Because uh, I, I just wanted to share something I've been thinking about uh, this week. So, um, so a charge. It's about charges and masses. You know, in my paper, I'm saying charge. the charge can be converted into a mass, right. and vice versa. I wasn't sure. Um, you know, I, I'm just double-checking my, my own theory, and it makes sense well, because a charge can be converted into a virtual particles. A mass can be converted into virtual particles. So if you convert a mass into a virtual particles, then you can convert the virtual particles back into a charge. So we could we could technically convert a mass into a charge through virtual particles. Would you agree? Yeah, that's, that's exactly what plasmoids do. Well, that's exactly what they do. A virtual particle. I mean, what is that? A holographic well, particle? Yeah, virtual particle is just a component of a magnetic field, electric field, gravity, or gravitomagnetic field. It's the residual. It's uh, what 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 carries the the force or the acceleration. Right, it's energy to mass. That's what uh, Joseph Newman's. Why well, call it virtual? It. Yeah, virtu they call it virtual because they can't they can't control it. They they just this it's just a side effect of a so of a mathematical uh, something they they can't. It's a particle they can't control. So you're control. saying it's, they consider the virtual particle the source of uh, momentum. So energy to mass, jerk, like with momentum, or like it's the momentum, the source of momentum. It's the source of momentum, the virtual right. particle. Yeah, is that the what virtual, you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It creates an acceleration in the force, or or force if you prefer. because they can't control it, 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 and they don't have know how to say where it's coming from or whatever. Like. Like Joseph Newman, he had a very large coil, all right, 4,000 pound uh, rotor he had, and he was hitting it with 460 volts at only 50 milliamps, and he was able to turn a 7,000 pound motor. It's energy to a mass. Second it's similar to entropy. The <laughs> second you hit a, a giant coil with a high voltage potential, not current, high voltage potential. That's why he was able to run a 7,000 pound motor with dead batteries. 
I believe he was pulsing his system on and off too, right? Yeah, he had a, me a mechanical commutator, basically a spark gap mm. switch the way my motor works. A lot of how my motor works is came from Newman. If, if you do it right, the very high potential that you use, the very flow of that potential to ground will create current. If you capture that, you got all the that's current right. you want. And that's that's where all the power is generated. It's in the core itself. It's in the core. That's where the potential and horsepower is generated. And then if you build it correctly, you could get the inductive reactance yep. happening. Right. It's so crazy because we use momentum to generate electricity like so, and yet that momentum's converted into electrical momentum that's then converted back into physical momentum. Right. Yeah, kind of. Well, it's because it's a closed system, right? Kind of like Phil was just saying with the virtual particle. That's right. It's an open system. He's, he's being able to go backwards and forwards between the two uh, matter right. and not matter. Yeah, he's allowing the matter to come in from free space into the device. That's an open system. It's like we convert how we convert electric to from momentum back into a uh, from physical moment momentum into electrical momentum back into physical momentum. It's a conversion of two uh, types right. of momentum. One but is physical, one is not. Closed. It's still closed. Right, so when you're open that, system, you're problem. actually mimicking nature. That's right. You're allowing the virtual particle from free space into the device. It's crazy. It's almost so like you're, yeah, magic, you're, you're you know? basically doing what nature does. You know, the universe uh, isn't That's limited right. and closed. You know, it's, it's, there's about matter how being many miles you walk in your lifetime. You know, that momentum it's, you generated. You, like uh, Th uh, Thomas Bearden actually kind of say uh, made a very uh, accurate comment. He says, is if your system stays out of equilibrium, you'll always be able to draw power from the ether or outside virtual particles into your system. Your system's open, which violates the second law of thermodynamics. But all the systems that we go by today is a closed system and falls under the second law of thermodynamics. So okay, so second. By Sorry, opening Mike, the I, circuit, you let the momentum, uh, uh, what did you call it earlier, Mike? You called it rebound. Convert. Sorry, say that again. By opening the circuit, you let the momentum you put into it rebound. That's right. You're now allowing the virtual particle from, from outside in free space to funnel itself back in. That's now an open system, an uh, unequilibrium system. The second so it goes open? equal... You said the second it goes equal, you may have just about answered my question. I'm sorry, Mike. Go ahead. Yeah, the second your system goes into equilibrium, it's now a closed system. It's now not taking power from the sense. ether or from virtual space into your machine. And that's so unfortunately it, that's how everything is built today. It's a closed system. Because the two potentials under. are identical. So that's an open right. system would be me pulsing my large coil. And the closed system it, would be me collecting the load off of the smaller coils. Right, in a closed system, because now you're not drawing uh, power from the outside environment in. Now, hold on. It's a closed if circuit. Puts, if he puts a triple spark gap in, can he open the system up and then pull the yep. vacuum from that in order to yep. gain more? That's huh. right. My system that's already that's pulls a vacuum. Like, right. just by the very, yeah, when I'm pulsing it, if I use too much power, my ears will pop in the room. Right. Does, so, does a triple spark well, gap go back to what you're saying with like uh, an in, an uneven system, like uh, asymmetry? Unequilibrium. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, unequal, uh, unequal. Out, yeah. yeah. Huh. Exactly. Exactly. That's why you want to use a spark gap. Yes. Oh, definitely. Why do you think te uh, that's why Tesla works? What's with, it? with the triple spark gap? What's all that about? Uh, it has. It goes back to Gerard Moore and what he was doing. He was creating a spark gap in order to pull more energy into his device than it was originally getting. He was basically right. using a vacuum in order to suck it in because he knew that the energy wasn't running through the wire necessarily. It was kind of running on the outside a little bit, and he was right. able to continue that a longer distance than he would a uh, regular system that's closed because it will right. dissipate energy instead of this one, which will actually continue the charge all the way down and back. That's right. Nathan's so, got it. Yeah, it basically, the vacuum instead of the wire. 
yeah, huh? basically would you? He would transfer through the vacuum instead of the wire. It, it would go as a vacuum. So when you pull it into the vacuum, it doesn't pull it into the wire. It pulls it to the outside of the wire and it rotates right. around it. All you need yeah. is like a milliamp inside in order for it to chase it. So it's like the rabbits, oh. the milliamp, and then here comes the, and so the, the milliamp and keep going. vacuum onto the wire yes. stimulates. It's like a tornado going in your wire. around the wire to join in. Kind of. Yeah, you're yeah, creating you're, like a you're, vortex almost, huh? Like the you're, you're creating you're, you're creating the negative uh, potential. Uh, you're creating the condition that allows that to flow into the system. Yes, yes. So because, there's so, spring, so, because there's it's not much different than cold energy. When you pull it, you have to have something on the other side <laughs> in order to pu pull the energy through it. So yes, right. but, you have you, you have to create the condition. Yeah. You got to create a load that could be a lesser yeah. potential. Or your load. Well, yeah, that's what well, I'm saying. You just create a load to it, and you pull the energy right in. Those three spark caps are important that there's three there too because yeah, they create the a three, sine three wave. Three spark caps. Yeah, yeah, they create a sine wave. Yeah, oh. it it changes your uh, energy into potential again. Are they so? Then it, you can amplify it by pulling more of the outside energy into it. Are they staggered or unified sparking? There's just three in a row. Are they stacked like one, two, three, or all like together? You can do yeah, one, three in a row. So, so they spark together. Well, I'm sure there's different timing in each one when they hit because they're going to pull oh, different amounts depends, in each right. one. It depends on the devices, whatever it's requiring, right? It'll just, it'll, it'll it's just a whole different way of thinking about things, right. man, when you want to start giving it three free energy. to choose from. I see. Yeah. Yeah. You, you just have to engineer a device you're creating. Uh, a potential situation that allows for atmospheric energy or radiant energy, whatever, <coughs> whatever you want to call it, it allows that to flow into the Is system. Is there any reason why one spark gap wouldn't work as opposed to three? It will work. It will work. But, you know, he's creating a frequency and a harmonic going through the spark gaps and eventually into the coil. And that's creating the negative uh, I see. An equilibrium in the system, and the second you get that unequilibrium system going, that's when the power starts coming from mm -hmm. free space yeah. into the device. But Can I say one more? Hmm. Go ahead. I want to say one more thing, and then I got to take off. Um, when it comes to the spark gap, think about this. Remember, I was talking about how when you put two wires closely together and cross in a certain way, you get the skin effect and you get the parasitic capacitance effect. Well, actually, what's happening in between those wires is not unlike a spark gap. You're getting plasma that's literally forming between the lines as they cross. And all that adds up like a hundred different spark gaps in one coil. And you take that and it amplifies the whole system. That being said, it's been awesome talking to you all. I have to take off. I got early morning and I'll see you all at APEC. Have a good night. night. Yeah, we're have a good night, Gerald. Have yeah, a great gonna, weekend, you guys. Yep. Yeah, thanks, Gerald. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, uh, we're gonna square it up here tonight because I gotta be on the road tomorrow. I got a road trip, and uh, yeah, it was a great show. I uh, was really happy with the show. I hope everybody enjoyed it. Uh, we yeah. kind of went all over the spectrum tonight, <laughs> <laughs> right from you know, politics all the way into the free energy, and all we we're everywhere tonight. So. Yeah, thanks a lot, everybody. Uh, we'll be back again live again uh, next Friday night at 9 o'clock Eastern. Thanks, uh, Nathan. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Mike. Thank you guys later. Philip, thanks a lot. And uh, everybody have a great week, and uh, we'll see everybody next Friday night. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks, thanks Mike. Thank thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye. Bye.